Hello, this is Aaron from AaronOnAutos.com. Today I got a question from Bill. Bill's question is kind of complicated. He basically just wants to know what is CAFE. Uh, CAFE in automotive is the corporate average fuel economy, C-A-F-E. Um, it's a really complicated thing because it's a mixture of uh, laws and regulation and politics. Uh, but at the base of it, the nutshell version is CAFE is what is used to measure a auto brand or auto uh, maker's overall uh, emissions footprint. So it is the average fuel economy for an entire corporation. Uh, in other words, Chevrolet has an AFE, a CAFE number, an average fuel economy uh, for all the vehicles they make. Uh, so does, say, um, um, Ford, Chevy, I already mentioned them, Subaru, Mazda, uh, Nissan, everybody, right? So uh, this is a measure of how the corporations are doing uh, in terms of their emissions. So uh, CAFE started in the 1970s. Uh, I believe the law was passed in 1975. And it was a direct response to the uh, Arab oil crisis, the oil embargoes of the years before that. So in the in the early 70s, we had oil, oil embargoes around, I believe it was 1975, uh, the CAFE standard was set. The CAFE is, is uh, regulated by and enforced by the National Transportation uh, Safety Administration, uh, Highway Traffic Safety Administration, so the uh, HTSA or the NHTSA because it's usually national in front of it. These are the, that's the same body that does crash testing for the government. So uh, the CAFE standard is credited with improving fuel economy over time. Uh, whether or not that credit is due is largely a matter of uh, opinion. It depends on whether or not you think that this forced automakers to go green. Um, the reality could be very different. It could have been the market that did that. But anyway, CAFE has required automakers to meet a certain standard. So I'm pretty sure the reason this question came up was because there has been a lot of talk about the fact that the current uh, administration in the White House has uh, put CAFE on hold. So in other words, they instead of continually requiring higher and higher standards, they have kind of plateaued it and said, this is where we're going to stay. Um, again, that's politics. So that's why I say it's a complicated matter, because this is as much about politics as it is anything else. What we do know is that the average car in the U.S., uh, as far as uh, domestics or imports, so not looking at trucks, uh, not looking at uh, anything else, just cars that are either made here or imported, um, the average economy has gone up dramatically. Uh, so in the early 1970s, uh, those cars were somewhere around an average of uh, something like, I think it was 20 miles a gallon. It was, it was 15 or 20 miles a gallon. Today, they're up close to 40. They're around 35, I believe. Uh, another thing to remember is this basically just applies to uh, consumer vehicles. It does not apply to, uh, to so what I mean by that is it does not apply to heavy vehicles. It does not apply to heavy duties uh, in trucks as well as commercial vehicles that are, you know, like 18 wheelers, uh, uh, delivery trucks, those sorts of things. Uh, so the UPS van coming around and those, those sorts of things are not part of this. This is only passenger vehicles, so uh, half ton trucks and smaller. Basically the the rule of thumb you can go with here. But in that case, the average fuel economy has gone from under 20 to well over 30. Uh, we're not quite at 40, we're not quite 35, we're more like 32 or 33. But still, it's a very big jump. Um, and again, you can credit that to all kinds of things. I don't think any one thing deserves a credit. I don't think the standard is uh, CAFE standard deserves credit, and I don't think that just the market deserves credit. I think it's a mixture of everything. Uh, I think had the market been the only thing, uh, then we probably would not have as high a uh, CAFE MPG as we do now. 
uh, if it was the other way, if it was only regulation, I don't think that would be it would be as high either because it would be a heavier political uh, point. So it would be much more heavily debated. Now, CAFE is, the other part of this is how CAFE is measured. So vehicles are broken into two basic categories. You have cars and then you have light trucks. Light trucks also include most SUVs and a lot of crossovers. Uh, it's based mostly on some weight and some design criteria, mainly on weight. Uh, so vehicles are gauged differently and requirements are different according to what category they fall into. Uh, those are the two kind of broad categories. There are, there are more categories than that, but those are kind of the, the gist of it, those two. And um, the CAFE standard has changed over time a lot. Uh, so the measurement requirements have changed. Uh, they're based on EPA uh, emissions measurements and uh, fuel economy measurements specifically. So you have an EPA measurement uh, fuel economy requirement of X. Uh, and EPA, will, uh, EPA testing has changed over time. So the testing that we use right now is different than the testing even just five years ago. Uh, they change the criteria slightly. And that's because the EPA's goal is to try to match a, re uh, a real world driving, but do so in a lab. So in other words, in a measurable, uh, repeatable instance. So in the scientific way, be able to measure the fuel economy of a car, but mimic the real world doing that. <clears throat> That's uh, uh, very difficult to do. It sounds like it should be easy, but it's actually really hard to do. Uh, today, I found in my own testing of vehicles, I have found that they are usually fairly close to those EPA numbers in reality. Um, that is if I do a straight up test. So if I do a highway only test, I get pretty close to that EPA number. Uh, sometimes a little over, sometimes a little under. Usually right close though. Uh, if I do in-town testing, it varies a little more, but that's because in-town testing is much harder to replicate. Um, you, you know, how often are you stopping? How often are you going? How much acceleration are you expected? Uh, all those things. How much traffic is there? All that stuff. Uh, so in-town testing is basically mostly based on slower speed driving with occasional stops. And that will vary greatly by the person driving and the situation. But what I have found is that the average uh, EPA number, so the average between town and highway, which is uh, biased heavily towards highway. By heavily, I mean it's about 55%, I believe. 55 or 60%. The, that number almost never matches. I almost never get that average. I usually get way below it. So if it says uh, the average for the car is, say, um, 30 miles a gallon, that's the average fuel economy. My average is probably going to be more like 25 or 26, maybe 27. And that's because my mix of driving may be very different than the EPA's expectation. Often in cars, I get above that expectation because that week that I had the car as a test, I actually did more highway driving than city driving. That's why I almost never mention the average for a vehicle. Uh, it's, it's very rare, and that's because for most of the time, you will never see that number either. You're not going to get that because your mix is not going to be the same. So all of those things said, the fuel economy numbers come from the EPA, and then the manufacturers vie to get those good EPA numbers. When they get a good EPA number, it improves their overall for all of their cars. So you get a good number on one model, and you get an okay number on another model, and you get a good number on another model, and then you get a not so good model on that uh, number on that last model. They even out and you come out okay. That's kind of what manufacturers aim for. That's the goal with this program, uh, is to average and get a good number on average. And hopefully that translates to individual vehicles improve over time. And it has tur turned out that way. So whether or not it's the regulation that has driven that solely, again, is totally up for debate. But the CAFE numbers are what manufacturers use to measure themselves and avoid getting fines from the government, uh, which is the incentive for following it. So that, in a nutshell, pretty much is CAFE.
That is what the corporate average fuel economy is. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be more questions. There's going to be plenty of comments on this one. So if you have something to say or if you have a follow-up question or anything else uh, that you want to ask me, you hit me up right down there uh, in the comments. You find me on AaronOnAutos.com up there. Find me on Facebook, Twitter, etc. Uh, if you saw this posted somewhere, then sure enough, uh, respond to that post right away uh, where you're seeing it right now. Just make sure to tag me uh, if you're not seeing this directly on my channel because uh, if you're not seeing it on on uh, Aaron on Autos, then uh, I may not see what you're saying. So if you have questions, if you want to comment on this, or if you want uh, more information, sure enough, just hit me up. Okay? This has been Aaron, AaronOnAutos.com. Talk to you again soon.